Hello everybody, this is Bud and in this video we will build the new latest version of i3 from Source. I just want to show you how to do that. I don't recommend that you do this, but it can be interesting to see uh, how it works. And since we will install uh, our own uh, version or the official build of i3 but we will or release of i3 but we will compile it uh, ourselves and install our self-compiled version so to speak not the official package version and stuff like that uh, we will of course need to uninstall the, the current version of i3 you actually don't really really need to do that but it, you kind of want to do that uh, meaning what I'm trying to get to is that uh, we will do this from a different window manager so we don't have i3 running at the same time things could get weird I, I actually think it is totally possible to do it with i3 running uh, replace the versions and stuff like that but of course don't do that let's let's use iswm here as our base uh, i have prepared it a bit uh, yeah the web browser please have some show notes that you can also check out yourself if you want to go to bud labs wiki we have the third show note i3 builds from source um, all right, so I guess we start by uninstalling the uninstalling the current version. We'll try to use the terminal as much as possible here uh, for installing packages and stuff like that. Um, we can first verify what version we have, i3 version, and that is version 4.20.1 and that is the last not the latest it was released on 3rd of november and this is the dot one release 4.20 was actually released in in like october or september or something 2021 um i added this link here which can be interesting to to look at um which is a list of all or not all of course but the top most used uh, Linux distributions and uh, what version of i3 is available for them. The green labels are the latest version. You can see it's available for Alpine Edge, Arch has it, Crux has it, Fedora 37, the development uh, Fedora has it, Rawhide Fedora has it, FreeBSD, Gento, uh, Magea, not sure what that is. Magea Cauldron, no idea what that is actually. Manjaro, of course. OpenBSD Ports has it. OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, don't have it. Mm. And that is what I'm using here. So if I want the latest, I need to build it from source. So that's what we're going to do here. But if you have a distribution that already provides this from, from your package manager, then definitely don't build it from source, use that version instead. Uh, Void has it. T2SDE has it. I don't know what that is, but it, it's there. Uh, all right, let's uninstall it. I will use uh, sudo supa rmi3. Enter the password. Uninstall 1.8 megabyte will be freed. Thank you so much for that. Right, and now i3 version command not found. Right. Then we need to do this. Yeah, I forgot to do that. So let's go to desktop here. As you can see, I have already, I did this once, but let's remove this uh, directory here. So rm rf i3 build. We start from scratch here and then we create a new directory make dear and let's call it i3 build make d make d not a comma cd i3 build guess we can also open the file manager uh, suse i don't know applications file manager settings system through our file manager 
All right, all right, all right. Uh, desktop, right, we build. <clears throat> we get back to this. These are the needed dependencies to do this, uh, but we can start here uh, by downloading the tarball with the latest release from the official i3.org webpage. So not from GitHub either. This is like the public real deal thing. Uh, w get and then the address should just bring that tarball to us here. Also, kind of, I guess I need to recommend that you should also verify this tarball by downloading the signature file here. Now we also got that. Um, and I guess we can go here to i3wm downloads also to see how it looks like. Here you can also view these different pages, uh, the different distributions pages for, for the different ver things here. But this is essentially what we have downloaded. This is the same URL. And this is the signature. Uh, and the signature, that means that uh, the person who com who packaged this tarball then uh, made a cryptographic signature with their private key. And that person was Mikkel Stapelberg, you know, the maintainer, author of, of, of uh, i3. Uh, he signed the tarball, uh, meaning that we can, with this signature file, verify that it is actually Mikael Stapelberg who, who did sign it, that we are not, that someone hasn't hacked uh, i3wm.org here. These, these are things that actually happens, you know. It was kind of a famous case when uh, Pale Moon uh, had this happening to them. Someone managed to hack their web page and provide like false uh, downloads. But it is very difficult. It is not impossible to fake it. Uh, with signatures and stuff like that, but you will, would, as a hacker, have to do quite a lot of work to, to really uh, spoof this if, with the, when you verify the, the signatures and stuff like that. But there is actually things uh, moving in that department. Geeks, uh, guys, the Geeks Linux distribution uh, presented a great, uh, or one of the maintainers of Geeks, I think is one of the maintainers, actually came up with this idea that that you should also sign the commits of the packages and stuff like that, whatever. The, the, this is getting even better, uh, this verification of, of, of the source here. Whatever. We get this signature file, and then when we have that, we simply enter the command. Uh, well, first you need to do this command, in this case, and here receive key. GPG receive key, and then the key is this is the key you want to receive um, and if that is the correct key we should also see here when we do this i have already done it so it will probably maybe we can do it again into prints yeah and we can see yeah this is Mikael Stapelberg's key now we are quite certain that we have the correct key here and then we can verify this uh, tarball with a signature file but of course, you know, if you fake both the tarball and the signature file and also fake this information and are just, you could like type Michael with a K or something like that, you know, it, it is possible to, to fool people. But in a way, this is also quite uh, uh, rock solid if you're careful when you're doing this. Thing is, to be honest, I seldom do this. And we also get some warning here that this key is not certified with a trusted signature. I'm not, yeah, so the key itself is not signed or something like that. But it prints here the fingerprint and that matches what we have here. And I think this is good enough for us here to verify that this is the correct, uh, this is what it says that it is, uh, a tarball of the i3 source code. Could also get it from GitHub directly, clone clone it or 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 get the source like that. But we we do it like this. All right, all right. Um, I entered all the commands needed for that, and and this is optional. If you don't do this, it you can still do everything, build everything. But this is a kind of a good idea to try to get this into your workflow if you are often downloading stuff like this. Um, all right, now we extract the tarball. Tar XF 
and we get a directory with the source. This is just source code. There are no compiled components, no uh, programs here, or there are some executable files, but they are you know, like scripts needed for the build process. <coughs> Uh, so we navigate into this directory and when we are here now I will do uh, a weird thing here I will actually remove because I have already installed all the dependencies I have have the command line here this will only work on SUSE of course uh, it's the the package names might differ on different distributions be aware uh, but you figure it out I believe uh, so I have already entered this sudo super install and then a long list here of dependencies it's the same as this list but i will actually now remove one of these dependencies because i want to show you how that looks like uh, when you try to build something from source and, and dependencies are missing that is kind of what's interesting in my opinion and what is most difficult to uh, fix Sometimes it's difficult, sometimes it isn't, but this one is a bit tricky here. XCB util wm devel. So I remove this now. Yes. All right. So now we pretend that we have installed all the needed dependencies. Great. We have extracted the tower board. We are in the correct directory. Now we simply do meson build and meson is a build system that will generate uh, the the build environment it will create uh, a ninja file and ninja is like make that is what is taking care of of the compilation for us by using a compiler which is a, a, another step you know the gcc or clan compiler is, is used here we don't have to worry about that all of that is taken care of by ninja but meson is what actually generates the files that ninja parses but meson also verifies that you have a, a valid environment that you have all the all the dependencies installed and that your uh, system is supported and stuff like that build here meson is is the main command build that is the name of the directory where we want to set up the build environment so it's not a command to meson it's the name of a directory and that doesn't exist here but it will get created when we execute it you can see now build is created here and it will yeah we immediately got an error for a missing dependency and if you paid attention the dependency are removed was not named like this because now I would like to show you here, uh, if we search for this, so we need to install this. Okay, your first intention would probably be to, yeah, it's probably called something like that. Let's, let's search for it with the super search, or this could be apt search or whatever, you know, xcb icccm, let's see if we find anything. <laughs> it's a little bit slow, the SUSE package manager, but here we see we have uh, XCB, lib XCB, ICCM4, that is actually installed, that is what this thing means, so this is installed and it's most likely not this 32-bit thing, so that means we need to install something else, hopefully it's an available package. Um, let's open the GUI version of, of the package manager. Just software. And see if it's easier to search there. The thing is, I know we will actually find it here. And that is also one of the weird things that very well can happen uh, that you need to fine tune your search a bit because the package that we need actually doesn't have any of these, or it doesn't have this ICCM in its name but it's included in the package. Another clue is that when you are using SUSE and Debian, then of these dependencies, the libraries, they are, the packages always, is, are always named like this. They are something dash devel for development. So it includes like the development header files that you need. Uh, so if you search for it here, uh, xcb icccm and you will see we get the same results two libraries one of them is installed here okay 
But if we just search for ICCCN here, and we get some more results, because it also, it doesn't just search in name, it also search in, search in keywords and summary here. Now we can see one of these devel packages here that looks very suspicious, XCB, util, wm, devel, uh, and something with the ICCCN utility modules. Uh, and it says here that it includes the development headers for lib XCC, XCB ICCM4, and this is what we want. So that is a bit weird, uh, you see. The package is named XCB util wm devel. The missing dependency was named XCB ICCM. Another way to, to figure this stuff out is to look at the, uh, the official package build of this uh, or the source for the packages provided by the uh, uh, distributions and I actually I I only know how Arch is doing this and to me I can actually look at the package build for Arch packages and still understand how to do it on, on SUSE and this is both useful for knowing which dependencies you, you need here is the package build for for uh, the Arch package. And here, first, maybe you go here to the official Arch Linux package uh, search thing and you figure out what's i3wm. You can see it's the latest version. It already have had two revisions. Interesting, I wonder if they have added any patches or anything here, whatever. Um, you find this, here is a list of dependencies and you can try to compare this with what you have installed and you will see here is that XCB util wm but on Arch they don't use that devel extension um, you can also view the source uh, which you get here source files and then you get to this repository and find the package build source because here you also see the dependencies uh, but here you can also see the commands needed to build. Here we have meson build is what we just did there. On arch you use arch dash meson but it, it's the same thing as meson build basically. And then ninja c build this is the compilation command that we will use later when we know that we have these. Uh, and this is the installation command ninja c build install. Let's not worry about this destir thing. Um, so you even if it's not exactly the same, you often get very good clues on what to do uh, uh, by looking at it. Yeah, I wonder if this is not a new patch. I think so. This patches an issue that is uh, present in the current version. Whatever, we will not get into that. But you could go hardcore here and copy this patch from Arch. I guess it is here, here in the trunk. No. Okay, whatever. Yeah, what? Let's let's not get sidetracked there. You you can figure it out here. Um, here it is. Okay, they download a specific commit from. Okay, whatever. You can figure this out if you want to. It's not super important here. Okay, let's install this. XCB util wm. And as always, this is a bit <laughs> messy here, but. What can you do? I'm trying to install something, build something from source, uh, also making some kind of tutorial and showing some tips and tricks on how to do it. It gets messy, I'm sorry. And we're using GUI package managers, we're using command line package managers, we're using Meson. There's lots of moving parts here. This is not a beginner video. Um, but we will get through and it isn't that complicated. Also, you see this output is kind of nice, isn't it? It's easy to understand what we need to do here. This is needed. It, even if you can see here, well, this also say no, but you can kind of ignore everything except the last error here because the, it stops here. If it, it could have stopped, for example, here, if this dependency wasn't found, then it wouldn't even test the rest of them. It stops here and say, hey, you need to install this. And then you install that, try Meson build or Meson build again, and then it will get further on the list and it stops here. You need this and that. So you might need to do this a couple of times. And I, I did that myself when I did this the first time here on SUSE. 
but now it is installed. We try it again. Mason build. Everything will pass now. You can see now it also created lots of files here in our build uh, directory. We are not in the build directory here. That is important to understand. Also, we are uh, in the parent directory. But this is where it creates the build environment. And now we use Ninja. You can also use Meson uh, to compile, but let's use Ninja. It doesn't really matter because when you use Meson for a compilation, it simply calls Ninja anyways. Uh, Ninja capital C. And Ninja capital C means, means where is the configuration? The configuration is in build. And the default action is compile. So this is all you have to do. Ninja C build. No sudo, nothing. And now it will compile uh, the program. Probably using uh, GCC here, I would guess. Uh, but you could configure this much more fine-tuned to use a specific C compiler. If you want to use Clang, you can configure it to do that, I guess. And you can also like fine-tune which, uh, if you want specific um, parts of i3 um, ignored and stuff like that. It's But that's, that's like advanced uh, stuff here. We don't need to take it here. And I think what we do now, we actually do the same build as Arch is doing now. And that should be fine, except that we don't apply this bug fix uh, patch. Right, it is compiled, went through without any errors. That's excellent. And we can also see now, we actually have the compiled source files here now in the build directory. And this is i3 executable. All we have to do now is install it. And then you need sudo privileges sudo ninja c build directory and now we say install you need to enter the password generates installation files and these are all the files it's installed because i3 comes with a lot of these doc files and stuff like that but here is the interesting part. These are the uh, binaries it have installed. And here we can see the default path it will install it to is user local bin, bin, which is also good because when you install stuff with the package manager, in SUSE at least, it will install it to USR bin would be the path for i3. And it is kind of recommended often that when you do this, what we do are doing now, we are compiling our own thing, doing it outside of the package manager. It's better to install those into USR local bin. So if, if uh, for some reason, it, it, it can very well happen by accident if you don't block the package manager to ignore i3, for example, and then uh, a different pa different package you install has i3 as a dependency and you're not paying attention and you say yeah install the dependencies and then all of a sudden now you have two versions of i3 installed but at least it will the package manager will install it to a different location it can still be a bit problematic to have two versions like this installed at the same time it is actually not that big of a deal here with this program but it could be uh, uh, if nothing else, quite annoying, uh, and you might sometimes launch the wrong application without knowing it, the, the wrong version and stuff like that. That doesn't happen for us now, since we have removed i3, the default package. And uh, yeah, I guess we can do this also. Because now it is actually installed, so we could do i3 version, and now it should print, no, okay, yeah. Now it, it tries, tried i3, because we have already executed the i3 command in this session here and bash you see this is an error from bash they try to execute the same uh, command and last time it did so it, it found it in uh, at this path but now as i just have uh, babbled about here we have it in usr local bin and not usr bin which it tried to find it in so we need to rehash that if we are doing it from the same uh, terminal session here so hash i3 and now i3 version now you see we have it here this is the latest version it is installed so if everything is working now we should simply be able to log out and log into our i3 session now you will also see that the old i3 session uh, entries here are removed 
because when you uh, those session files uh, are created by the package maintainers for the different distributions they are not provided by i3 and this is often almost always the case if there are some some of these files like desktop files are uh, created by by the distributions so we don't have it here but since we are actually using i3 in our custom session which we which is of course not removed we can start that to try see if we if it works yeah we get a bar at least damn it uh that holds key problem all right yeah we get a terminal so and it looks like it's i3 and we can verify that it's the latest version by doing this and it seems to be working <laughs> pretty nice let's remove i3 now let's log out and remove it because you might think why why why, why? you just install it now yeah but you know this is very good to know this how to actually redo what we just have done because that you will probably want to do that at one time even if you do follow my steps here now yeah great now i have the new version of i3 but someday in the future probably not that far away it will be available for tumbleweed for example here in the official repositories then it is strongly strongly recommended to get the latest version from the official uh, uh, repositories instead and then you would uh, want to remove uh, your home compiled version uh, let's see desktop app system terminal emulator xfce terminal so we did our custom build here in desktop i3 build there we have the tarball the signature file and the directory called i3-421 and this is the directory where the build directory is this is where you want to be uh, and now we simply do sudo ninja c build uninstall so now we don't have now it have deleted all the files it installed you can see this is it's super fast so it's super easy uh, let's install it again and then we will simulate a quite common thing <laughs> uh, which is sometimes you do this you have compiled your own version of something you install it you start using it then you clean up your uh, clean up your downloads uh, folder or whatever you know and you by mistake delete this source directory that i where i3 was built from uh, that is something that very easily can happen it has happened to me many times this is the directory you know now we delete it we don't have the source anymore how are we supposed to uh, uninstall it now now we would have to remove these files manually with rm and that no that is not acceptable it's it's not just uh, very hard to do it's also very easy to uh, miss something because the installation paths are not that obvious all, always and as you could see here it was a lot of packages or files here with i3 and sure we could just remove the the subdirectories if we want to do but or you couldn't do that either we cannot remove the man directory because that would remove all uh, um, all manual pages in that so we you would have to be very careful doing that and you really don't want to do it at all so what we do now is simply redo all the steps here go to our i3 build directory now i i didn't remove the tarball here but I, I, imagine that we also removed that then you need to download the same tarball again so now we have done that then we extract that xf i3 tarball then we go to that directory then we do meson build We'll verify that we have all the dependencies now we have that so no no big deal then we do ninja c build because we also need to compile and with meson and ninja i've noticed here that you also need to install it again even if it is already installed now 
we will need to install it again for uh, Ninja to get like the installation log of what files it needs to delete or what files are installed. Those are the files it will delete and you need to install it again here for that to work. Uh, th this is true at least for Meson Ninja. Uh, I know that autoconf uh, automake combos um, I don't think you need to install again. It will have the uninstallation targets uh, anyways in a way. Right, um, we can do this also, i3 version, just to verify that we have it installed. Yeah, the latest version is installed. But now we have compiled something here in a, in a new directory from a <coughs> different tarball, or it, it should be the same tarball, but maybe we download it again, you know. But this is a new build. Uh, we can also try to do this first, sudo ninja c build uninstall and that will not work because we have not installed this build so ninja has no idea here uh, what it needs to uninstall <coughs> um, so we simply do this even if it is installed it doesn't matter it will not mess anything up here really uh, it will only overwrite files that are older uh, and different I believe and that's you can see how fast it is the installation here and all these files were already installed but it doesn't matter and now it will actually work to uninstall it and that is how you uninstall even if you delete the source directory and you, as you can see you also don't need the source directory that is why it's so easy to delete it because it is kind of useless you don't need it anymore except for the time when you want to uninstall then you need it and that is why the best way to do this is to actually uh, create your own package. We will not go into that in this video at all because I don't even know how to do it on SUSE. I know how to do it on Arch. It's not a big deal and you can also just view how it was done with the official package. Sometimes it's as easy as just changing the version numbers in the package build. Uh, sometimes you need to do more things. But it's a very, very, very useful thing to uh, learn how that process uh, works and, and actually try, I, I really recommend anyone using Linux, try to create packages uh, because it will give you a much deeper understanding for both how the distribution and specifically your package manager works. But it's a, it's a very, very uh, uh, good thing to, to have done a couple of times. Just and, and the thing with packages is you you know you can create a package locally. You don't have to upload it to like like AUR or anything. You can just do it for yourself, and it's useful to do it for yourself. In this case, if we instead here had created a, a SUSE package out of this, an RPM, I guess, uh, and installed that package instead, that would be much better because that would also make sure that our package manager knows that this program is installed. At the moment it doesn't know that. So it means that if we would install something that has i3 as a dependency, I don't know, let's say we install i3 bar on its own, that would say, hey, I need i3, it's a dependency. And then the package manager will, will look, oh, this guy doesn't have i3 installed. Even if we do, we install it ourselves, but the package manager doesn't know about this. So it will now download that the i3 automatically and, it, and install it. Things like that would never happen if you create a package instead. And another benefit is this thing. You don't need to have the source directory or anything. You, you can simply remove the package. Even your custom local packages, are, they work exactly the same way once they are insta installed. You remove them with the package manager and you don't need to have the source files and stuff like that. Don't have to remember the weird Meson Ninja commands and stuff like that. It's the same super remove uh, on SUSE and and whatever package manager you use, you know. So that is what you really should do if you're doing this stuff. And I think I will actually need to do this on SUSE because as I said, it's very, you, you learn a lot just by doing that. I don't even know where to start on SUSE. Seriously, I, I, I don't know it. That's why I haven't done it either. Uh, but I really should look into it. Um, and I probably will. Maybe today. 
Okay, it's deleted and now all we have to do is install it with uh, the package manager if we want to, sudo super install i3 or we could install it again our custom build here. But I think I want to do that, sudo ninja c build install. Boink. And that's how you build uh, i3, the latest version from source. So I hope I hope it was clear that this is really not recommended that you are messing with this like in one way, but in one, one part only actually do recommend people doing this exact thing, experimenting with this stuff. This is a gateway into uh, actually starting to, to making programs yourself. Like this is the first step, getting this to work. Then the next step is to apply that patch, you know, that Arch actually has a patch uh, for or Arch. They had taken the patch from the official i3 uh, uh, repository because they have actually already fixed this, but it's not available in any official release yet. Um, uh, uh, man, this is annoying. This um, where is where is um, web browsers Firefox? Thank you. So there is a bug uh, in in the latest release. It, it's nothing serious. It's just about the window decoration gets toggled if you have a single uh, tiled window, even if you have border set to zero or something like that. It's not not a big deal. Um, and they have fixed it in i3, uh, the official repository already. Or i3, i3 is the correct one, right? this one. An arch in the arch package there. You can see here they uh, uh, pull requests. And the, in the arch package, the patch that they used was pulled directly from GitHub. So they are using the, the, the commit that fixed that. And we can see it here. This is what is fixing it to be included in next bug fix. And I, I, I would guess that we will see this bug fix release in, in maybe two, three weeks. They will make a new release of i3 uh, with minor bug fix things like this. This is not a big deal. I don't think this is a reason not to use i3 whatsoever because of this stupid thing here. Uh, but it's of course really good that they have fixed it, but it's not a serious issue at all. And I also have, or, or doesn't really have any sympathy for people who don't use a title bar. It's like, of course you use a title bar. Why? <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot use a, cannot <laughs> you have to use a title bar, you know? Uh, so. It's only for those who don't use title bars anyway, so who cares, right? Uh, but I could see there, there it seemed to be something I haven't seen that. Um, this is probably good during config validation. This stupid config validation, they should remove that. It's like 10 years old now. Uh, they, they check that you have version 4 of i3 and not version 3. They should remove that com config validate thing here. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably really, really good if they fix this issue then, but whatever. Uh, but that is the next step. You compile, then you learn how to apply like patch available patches. Next step is to start messing with the source code yourself and create your own patches. Applying that, creating your custom, custom packages. And then all of a sudden you are you are really into it, you know. You are part of, of the open source movement and is uh, maybe even creating your own software. But you really don't have to do that either. You can be part of, of, of the scene, so to speak, by just contributing patches, bug fixes and stuff like that. And this is the hardest part in a way, is to learn and and not be be scared of, of the build process 
and understand how these different uh, dependencies and that stuff how it fit all fits together and there is of course a lot more to this i didn't cover it here at all about like package config and how to find the different uh, how the how it they actually work the header files and stuff like that it's so much but the, this just getting through this initial step the, this is like installing arch <laughs> for linux uh, programmers in a way then you start rising the environment and and you will see this is worth it this is what you want to do build i3 from source but don't build i3 from source install the, 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 what's provided by your package manager kids do you understand do you understand what i'm trying to say <laughs> Bud lab message, Bud Labs message. Don't do what I say, do what I mean. Um, and I, I'm saying, don't, don't compile i3 from source. It's you can get lots of weird issues if things gets wrong in worst case scenarios. Not a good idea. That is what I'm saying. But it might not be what I actually mean <laughs> and verify or that you should do verify the, the tarballs it's it's a good idea I should also get better at that myself all right all right uh, this is enough I think it went well um, hopefully you learned something if you have never done this before this is really for those who have never done it been curious about how this actually works maybe you have tried it and failed Maybe you now know what you did wrong. Um, I don't know. Um, of course, different on this different distributions, different package names, yada, yada, yada. But I think this is a good base. It really doesn't matter. I will actually try to do this on, on Ubuntu uh, also because I have a Ubuntu in a virtual machine uh, as well. And I will just see if there is anything that is really different i don't think i actually don't think there is anything different the same package names probably applies to debian but i'm not sure all right whatever i see you in the next video i'm not 100 percent sure what it will be about but i see you there have a great day bye 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 bye